Hey everybody, Hunter Bakes here, back with our review reel. Um, our way is a little bit late recording this here, so I probably won't upload this till tomorrow. But, uh, unless everybody, I'm, uh, I'm here with my review for Survivor Series 2020. Everybody, as you all saw a couple days ago, I did a predictions video on the show there, so I said I would do a review there to that, so. I wonder what video will be coming out. I also expect to my uh, list video, my next list of video, everyone, where I will be uh, doing a list of my favorite robberies of the other ticket there. Because a kind of little tribute um, to him since he tonight was his farewell, final farewell, which I will get to that really on there. So, that, so. but anyways, everyone, I'm gonna go through everything that happened from the game from. From getting to in the show there and stuff like that, so uh, and give it overall thoughts for whatever y'all should check out or not. So, one, I'll cut, I'll go ahead and start things out here with the kickoff show match. Your one, which was the dual brand battle royal, and um, <laughs> yeah, sorry, one had a bit of a snack not too long ago, it's very hiccup and stuff, but anyways, um, uh, that was everybody. Uh, there was a kickoff show which had the interbrand battle royale there, um, and I thought this was an all right match. I mean, it wasn't a bad match, but it was something too crazy there. I mean, I was barely just there for a kickoff show match up there, but and none of the two guys have predicted as the winners within the hit. I my prediction was said either I'll either go for the lead from Raw. Or Laura Silver Svet, but either one of them was in the match, so um and the um, the only ones who got entrances were Rey Mysterio, his son Dominic Murphy, and the Miz and John Morrison. So I figured they'll be knit down Yeah, sorry, what if there again? I said I figured it be down to those five there, or those five to win the match up there, so I said, those are the already match up there, but in the end, it came down to Chad Gable, Dominic Mysterio, and The Miz. Miz in the roll outside the ring sometime there, in the bottom rope, so he's not eliminated. So he had to throw your points over the top rope, or to eliminate them there. Um, so Chad Gable and Dominic fought for a bit there. Um, and uh, Dominic eventually gets Chad Gable eliminated there, he thinks he's won, and The Miz came back in. He had tossed out Dolly Mysterio to win the match for Raw there. Um, so, yeah. Um, I said, I thought that was an alright match there. They really didn't have too much to say about it there. Um, that's there for a kickoff show there. You know. As for Miz winning there, I think it will kind of benefit the Miz there. It's, you know, kind of help build him up a bit since, you know. He's supposed to be the money the bank holder there. That's where he took it from Otis at Hell in Cell. Um, has a really big, as he is a credible threat to the WWE Championship there. So, but like you said, I do feel like Dominic could benefit more from the win here since he is the upcoming rookie there. It's like that. But it is what it is. So, well, uh, it was all right match for a kickoff show. So yeah. As for the main shorter one, ended up kicking off with. The men's Survivor Series Elation match with T Raw versus Team SmackDown. On T Raw, there was AJ Styles, Keith Lee, Braun Strowman, Matt Riddle, and Sheamus. And on Team SmackDown, there was Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens, Jay Uso, Barry Corbin, and Otis. Um, <coughs> I started by the birth there again. Apologies. Uh, try to keep it down for the video. Again, sorry for that. For a while, I'll try to keep it down the minimum here, so. Anyways, um, uh. And when I was looking forward to this matchup, everybody, um. It's meant to be a competitive one. It was like that at the beginning there, but then, um. Well. Eventually. Turned into something I didn't expect there. Oh, not the good kind, though. Um, don't get wrong, it's still a good match, but. I felt like this could have been better there and stuff like that. Um. But we'll just say things did not end well for Team SmackDown there. Um, 
It all started with Seth Rollins um, came in. He offered himself as a sacrifice there. She was, he was like, kick me, and stuff like that. Um, and she was, hit them with a broad kick, and Seth Rollins got up. Ill Nate there, he was the first one out for to keep SmackDown. They went downhill from there for SmackDown there. Um, eventually, Kevin Owens got eliminated. Then Barry Corbin, and then Otis. And it was just that Jay was so well. Jay put up a valiant effort. He eventually got to get out there and Raw ended up win the men's Super Series match with a clean sweep there, 5 0. Um, Zero Raw, when I thought it was still a good match, but uh, I was expecting a bit more there. Um, I guess there was a ball there, stuff like that. You know, they were all still competitive at the beginning portion there. There were some cool moments there. And we had cool interactions there, stuff like that. There were some stars, but you know, probably could have been better, you know what I mean? So, at least that, that was a decent way to kick off the show, though. So. And thereby, we had the tag team championship matcher one, which the tag break for the tag champions are one, which was the new day, the raw tag champions versus the street profits, the SmackDown tag champions. And I really enjoyed this match for one. This was a very competitive match between um, the new day and Drew Hart Sarah. That definitely thought was better than the as far as their elimination match up there. Um, A very good pet match up there. Go back and forth between both the New Day and the Street Parts there. Um, but in the end, the Street Parts did get the win over the New Day. So, now I predict the New Day will win there. But now I'm upset the Street Profits uh, win there. You know, it, I really enjoyed both teams. Uh, and, you know, it's a good run for the Street Parts there. Shows that they're on the same level as the New Day there. So today has been capped by the flag bearers for the tag team divisions for the WWE there. So yeah. And it was a good the matchup there with, you know, Street Profits said New Day having the sportsmanship like as I had there. So yeah. Really good matchup there. You know, help bounce the show back for the first one there. So yeah. And by the way, everybody I did predict, you know, that team role would win the men's there. So yeah. I got that right, so <laughs> So far, uh, one in one predictions there. So, next up, everybody was the Battle of the Secondary Champions, the United States Champion Bobby Lashley versus the Intercontinental Champion Zayn. Um, and uh, well, kind of similar to the. Uh, Kickoff show match was a bad match up there, but I felt like it was just kind of there, you know, nothing really too crazy there. It's like that, you know. And, you know, I thought Retribution would get involved somehow there, kind of renewed the rivalry with the Hurt Business, but that didn't happen there. Um, the match was probably actually dominating there, as we've seen, tried to get the upper hand different points there, but then, you know, it dragged them with the Hurt Business, you know, at the cost of there, it's like that, you know, and Lashley eventually got the win by locking the hurt lock on Xavier Zane there. Um, even though our point for Raw, yeah. Um, so. I predicted Xavier Zane to win, but that didn't happen, so I won two predictions there, so. Oh, good uh, good win for Lashley, though. You know, help spill him up there, you know. And I was spill him up in the hurt business there, you know. Eventually, you know. I can see McIntyre, it's like break for break for break for. I see Lashley potentially challenging the Chip Chip again there, you know. At least remember he challenged um, McIntyre earlier this year at Backlash. I feel like uh, if he wanted to, he could be a another, a ch contender for the Chip Chip once again there. So, yeah, it gets for the birthday one. Yeah, sorry, we're for the birthday. Anyways, uh. But like I said, one overall, I thought this match was all right there. Nothing crazy, so. Although it was probably, it, it's on, probably on par with the pre-show match there, so yeah. It's really match quality, so yeah. Like I said, everybody was about the Women's Champions, Raw Women's Champions Oscar versus 
So by the way, she beat Sasha Banks. So, and I thought this was a really good match there. When uh, as I expected from Oscar and Sasha there, you know, very good back and forth. We both went in there. I'm, uh, Uh, eventually, yeah, Sasha did get the win over Asuka there, so I did predict Sasha to win there, you know. Uh, also, she had a pretty good year, you know. I felt like, you know, Sasha definitely, you know, needed to win more than her since she, you know, recently won the side of the way she was for Bailey there and stuff like that, so yeah. So, a really good matchup there. Felt like the right person won, so yeah. Alright, well, next up, everybody, was the second of the Survivor Series Elevation match, which is the Women's Survivor Series Elevation match. On Team Raw, we had Nia Jax, Sheena Baszler, Lacey Evans, Peyton Royce, and Lana. Don't forget to keep SmackDown, Becca Belair, Bailey, Natalia, and Ruby Riot, and Liv Morgan of the Riot Squad. So, I definitely thought this match was better compared to the mids there, a lot more competitive there, you know. I go back and forth with the women there, you know. I feel like they had their moment, yeah, each one had their time to shine and whatnot there, to be competitive, stuff like there, but. Although there were definitely some surprise elations early on, one as Bailey and Natalia were the first two laid for Team SmackDown there, but. Although eventually Peyton Royce got laid for Raw there, um. And a lot of she did have some action going on there, but then eventually I can't remember who tagged in, but the rest of the role was he was pretty much a lot of the stayed on the steps of the quarter side there, let them do the work there as fat. So she got plays back of the fish, which I'll get to here a bit. Uh um but anyways everyone until match continues there eventually of uh Ruby Riot and Liv Morgan get taken out there. Which um, I think Lee Evans might. I think oh, I think Lee Evans got laid some time in between then, so I can't remember the top of my head. But yeah, it eventually goes down to a three on one scenario there. While Bianca Blair, she's the only woman left for Team SmackDown. Uh, And she had a strong show in there, but and she had a strong show in there. Definitely one of the breakout stars of this matchup here. Um, and she did she did manage to um get Trina and Nia Lady there. I'll get back to Nia a bit. Um, she basically had the key of clutch locked in, or or the queen of spades there. <laughs> My bad. One and my submission. Maneuver names mix up there for a sec, but it was uh Michael Blair out of the ropes, perfect count five, she basically got the need. Then Night Jax and Bianca Blair brawl the outside there. The referee ends up starting to count there. Um and eventually the referee gets the count of ten and Bianca was able to get back in ring time. So T Brawl ends up getting the win in the wins matchup since Lada Never got eliminated there, so that so a lot of them being the sole survivor for the wins. So I started match up there, and <laughs> you know I've heard some you know, rumors that she might end up the sole survivor, but they didn't know how they was gonna do that there if she if they were going down that route. But uh, really don't know what to think of it there. You know, I mean, I can see some people thinking it was a dumb fish to match up there and stuff like that. You know, Bianca should, yeah, the team's fighter should have won. Um, uh, yeah. You know, I predicted the team's fighter to win there, you know, for the women's matchup there, so. Uh, I felt like, you know, we got to think over there. I do feel like Bianca, because Soul's fighter would have been the better option there, but it is what it is, so. 
Um, yeah. Uh, like I said, Lala gets the win. You know, she was the only one left out of the women's team for Raw. So, yeah. I said, Raw, that was better than the men's match up there, match quality wise, but. Uh, but. Uh, not, but not too sure about the finish, though. So, yeah. Everybody, we move on to the final matchup of the show there. And, in my opinion, probably the match of the night, which was Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre, Universal Champion versus WWE Champion there. And, you know, I was expecting these two to really go ahead there, and I feel like they lived up to the hype and the expectations there, you know. McIntyre, Roman were going very hard, he gets one of them there, you know. Very back and forth, very competitive there, you know, very hard-hitting match, if, uh, um, but at the end, I'm, uh, uh, Roman Reigns doesn't get the win there, although through some shenanigans, though, um, Drew McIntyre ends up hitting the Claymore Roman there, but Roman ends up knocking the referee down in the process there, so, uh, and thus, um, that left room for Shakari to go on, so Jay was ended up coming in, um, uh, cause a brief distraction for McIntyre. McIntyre tried to go for the... They he, he tried to go for feature stuff DT, but Roman Reigns had a low blow in him there. Um, literally, about Roman beat down McIntyre. There's my assistance from... So he had a super key McIntyre there. And Reigns had a lock in. They get he choke there, choke out McIntyre there, and get the win. So... And, you know, I felt like that was the right move there, you know. And I, you know, they kind of expected it there, but it was very well executed there, you know. And Roman came out on top there, so yeah. I was like, yeah, Jay's made good graces with Roman there for the time being, and, you know, it'd be cool to see McIntyre and Roman go ahead and get some type of future, all I do not exactly win, but it'd be cool to see these two go ahead and get there. They've had a really good matches in the past there, but this is probably the best one they've had so far in the series of matches there, so yeah. And like I said, I'm going to pick for best match of the night there, so yeah. At last, but certainly not least, everybody, was the farewell. The show ended off with the final farewell of The Undertaker there. Um, it started out with bringing out, you know, people that were four rivals, a good friends of The Undertaker there, something like that. They brought, you know, guys like Big Show, Jeff Hardy, Kane, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, you know, and some... And some, yeah, and some other veterans there, you know, or good friends are going to take, like, Godfather, Savio Vega, the Godwins, you know, uh, Nature Boy Ric Flair, you know, and, you know, <laughs> they get, definitely got a good number of people there, you know, for the take your celebration there, but, uh, Cowardice and, you know, a bits, different bits of Undertaker's history there, so Undertaker, you know, he's, Bit, technically been a part of all the major eras of WWE from the, from the golden era there, the golden years of professional wrestling there, you know, in the late 80s, early 90s, the new generation and add to their uh, ruthless aggression that in the current modern era for WWE there, so, you know. And Mr. Bag came out there and, you know, which, yeah, he did see the Undertaker there, Undertaker, you know, his farewell speech there, you know, and for 30 years, he's been, rest, he's put, he had people rest in peace there, and it's just his time, it was his time to rest in peace, and stuff like that there, you know. And Undertaker ended up, and they thought they doing a signature pose there, and we did a really cool thing there, have a short hologram of Paul Bearer there, you know, was you remember, you know, Paul Bearer and Undertaker were very close with one another there, you know, you know, uh, Paul Bearer was Undertaker's manager there and stuff like that, you know. And he definitely played a big role helping Undertaker out and stuff like that there, you know. So, yeah, that was, that was cool for WWE to do that there, you know. And showing it off with Undertaker, you know, walking off one more time down the ring and close it off 
a 30 year career you know everyone it's definitely a that crap yeah sorry what i was getting a little teary eyed there yeah you know. definitely a bittersweet moment there by you know our tear going down one of the all type braids you know definitely will be you know He's truly got to be one, a one-of-a-kind wrestler there. There's not going to be anybody like him there, you know. You know, this was something we've been expecting for a while there, but it's definitely, you know, got to be not, definitely not got to be the same, not seeing him around there as well. But on behalf of the wrestling fans, thank you, Undertaker, for everything you've done for the wrestling business there, for all the entertainment you've given us to the wrestling, you know, as wrestling fans there, you know. It was an honor to see you, you know, a person there to see your matches there, you know. Everybody, if you remember, see this poster for WrestleMania 32. Everybody, that was when I went, I was went live there with some family members there. You know, we saw Undertaker and Shane Man fight the Hell in a Cell there, you know. And, you know, I know some people aren't, don't look back to fun the WrestleMania 32 there. It's, it's a kind of been a better show and stuff like that there, but it's part, part of one of my favorites there, you know, since it was, you know, my, since it was, you know, one of my dreams was to uh, be at WrestleMania Live there, and, you know, and, um, I thought, you know, that I had a great time and stuff like that there, you know. It was definitely, you know, definitely one of my favorite matches. Looking back on it, was definitely the hell of so much we Undertaker shoot, man, there, you know. And it was honored, you know, to, you know, have, you to see Undertaker live there, and stuff like that, you know. And, you know, like I said, it's definitely, yeah, be hard not to see him around there, but like I said, thank you, Undertaker, for everything you've done. On behalf of wrestling fans, we're going to miss you, and best of luck wherever you do next, man. So, overall, everybody, for Survivor Series, by, um, I thought it was a good Survivor Series, good pay-per-view overall there. I wouldn't break it up there as one of the best Survivor Series there, but I thought it was still a good show overall, you know. Definitely the highlights for me there were, the biggest highlights were, you know, of course, Undertaker's final farewell there, you know. Uh, the last time we'll see him there, you know, at least until he gets inducted to the Hall of Fame. And of course, you know, there were a good number of good matches there, you know. So the best one being Reigns versus Dragon Tiger. And also good, the good ones are like New Day versus Street Profits and Sasha and... And Oscar there, you know. Most of our series matches were good there. You know, I felt like they could be better there to fight that, you know, certain areas. Of, uh, and like I said, the battle reel and the match between Zabi Zane and Bobby Lashley was just all right there. So, you know. Like I said, overall, a good show there, you know. I wonder where I get up there as one of the best Survivor Series of all time there, but it's still a good show overall, you know. You should definitely watch it there, you know, for the mat for the matches that were very good there, just like that. And, you know, of course for, you know, be an Undertaker's final appearance there, stuff like that. So yeah. Hey, everybody, that concludes my review for Survivor Series, everybody. I'll see y'all next video, everybody. If you like what we saw, you make sure to the like button. If you do chill, hit the subscribe, hit the bell notification icon so we will be able to upload everybody. We'll see y'all next time. Have a big Peace.